It's your girl, Lady J. Back with the bullshit. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and keep it cute in them comments, baby. Do you hear me? Hey, y'all. Welcome back to my channel, Southern Tea. It's your girl, Lady J, back bringing you my commentary on, you know, what's happening with the female vibe girl leaves urban news when I feel like talking about it, but I guess it's two in one. So before I get into the video, I need you to go ahead and hit that thumbs up, comment, share, and baby, you already here. So, you know, you might as well subscribe to my channel, baby. <laughs> Do you hear me? Okay. So let's go ahead. So the first topic I want to get into is Nicki Minaj because she dropped her red booby the sleeves video Sunday. And, you know, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about it and I want to give my little two cents on it. too, baby. OK, so uh, one, I thought the video was cute, lighthearted. Um, you could tell they were just having a good time. Her and her friend Brooke, I'm um, just, you know, having a good time. And if you're not uh, plugged all the way in. Brooke has been going through it the past few months. And my condolences go to her and her entire family because earlier this um, year or a few months ago, she lost her daughter um, to a car accident and to lose a child. I mean, to lose anybody is, is, is horrible, but a child, I just feel like is a whole nother level of pain. And um, I don't, I don't, I don't know how that feels and I don't ever want to know, but my heart just goes out to Brooke and anyone who has ever lost a child. I, I don't even, can't even fathom. Okay. So it was just nice to see Nicki Minaj just be a friend to Brooke and Brooke even came out and did talk about this, how Nicki Minaj has been there for her and her family throughout this entire grieving process. And that's just something that won't make the blogs, not that it should, but it's nice and refreshing to know that Nicki Minaj is, is a friend behind closed doors. Whereas a lot of these bitches are fake as fuck. Okay. So it's just nice to, you know, see her doll up her friend, get her cute and put her in the last little music video. I thought that was real cool. By the way, I just want to say how good Nicki Minaj looked. I mean, baby, that body was phenomenal. You know, titties are sitting up there, okay? The, the butt is, is doing what it's supposed to do. That stomach, flat, flat, baby, do you hear me, okay? So, like I said, she looked good. The ass is ass and the titties are tittying and the, and the hips are hipping, baby, do you hear me, okay? So, I thought she looked really good and um, I was really into the video. Um, it was real cute. It was real simple. I wasn't expecting a whole you know, big thing because it, it this is not a, the fifth thing thing single. Okay. Um, you could tell she was just, you know, at home when they filmed it or le at least some of it. Cause you know, you can tell they added some stuff in cause some of those scenes were recent from like a few weeks ago versus other scenes that were from like a couple of months ago when the song first dropped. Okay. So it was really just like a cute and casual video. Like if someone was just following her and broke around and just recording them being girls walking down the street and all up in Nikki's house and just being cute. Now, I see a lot of people complaining about the video. And I'm not really sure why, because Nikki was never going to drop these visuals to begin with. She just teased it, but sis never really planned on dropping it like that, from what I could tell and what I could gather. And and plus, this is not a, a lead single for the 15th thing, to her, for her to go all over the board for a big blown out video. Okay, um, It's something to hold the fans over, and it's something that the fans wanted, because they asked for it. It's something nice to just give her fans. So I'm not really seeing why I wanted her to put this big budget behind a music video when she just did that for Super Fiction girl she just did that for the princess diana song like this is a, a single granted but red ruby the sleeves is not the official single for the 15th thing so there, there there was no need to give a big budget behind this video at all and we're lucky we even got a video because clearly this was nikki having fun and i'm starting to see um delusional people talking about how she doesn't have the funds for a video <laughs> like she ain't the most paid female rapper and the highest paid and literally she's more than likely the one who played for that uh princess diana video so let's start there because i have yet to see i spice shoot a video that looks anything close aesthetically to princess diana okay so we can start there and for two, um, we already seen how big budget Nikki can make those music videos. Like we saw it with Super Freaky Girl. We saw it with Do We Have a Problem? I mean, she's already given us four videos in two, 2023. I don't care about them being collaborations, okay? That she's giving us music, which is what a lot more... Nick, first of all, a lot of y'all's faves ain't even giving y'all any music, but y'all are complaining about Nikki putting out a certain type of music video when y'all fave ain't even been feeding y'all any type of music for two years. Okay. Uh, we can start there. So, you know, like I said, this wasn't an official single, but it was nice to give us some visuals just to make the fans happy. Okay. And I feel like Nikki can do what the fuck she want to do at this point. And, and, and I love that for her right now, because now you hoes need to be scared. Okay. Because she's happy living her best life and having fun with the music at this point. And that 
is when she is at her best. That's when she's at her peak, like her lyrical best all around artistry because she's just having fun and there's no real pressure. So I don't know why you hoes are complaining. OK, you guys are the same hoes crying mad because you wanted visuals to begin with. You got them and you still got something to say. That's why you begin your ass blocked. Shut up and enjoy the music. OK, and I'm talking to the people I'll be seeing on Twitter complaining. She is putting way more out than what your faves have been doing the past few months to years. OK, some of them haven't even dropped since 2021. Let's keep it a buck. OK, so let's swallow a real pill and be grateful. You get what you get. And you don't throw a fit. Didn't they teach y'all that in elementary school? OK, so let me know your thoughts on it. So below. the next topic I want to get into is Doja Cat and Ice Spice. OK, so in um, the Ice Spice interview on Billboard the other day, she did talk about a lot of things. And we talked about it in my last video. Um, she also, you know, talked about the power of manifestation, you know, how, you know, she manifested becoming a rapper and she also manifested a collaboration with Nicki Minaj. You know, she talked about how they manifested these things and blase, blase and all that stuff, which kudos to her, by the way. Um, but Doja Cat was also brought up in the interview and Ice Spice mentioned how she first met Doja Cat at Fashion Week a couple of months ago. And um, they took their little picture and she basically talked about how she found, um, fanned out over Doja Cat. And um, there's not many people that she says she fans out for and that, you know, she really likes Doja. And I think she called her a legend and stuff like that, which, you know, is a little bit too soon for me. OK, it's a little bit too soon to be calling Doja Cat a legend. But, you know, Doja Cat is talented in her own right when the bitch ain't acting crazy. So, you know, um, this also got a lot of people speculating about a potential collaboration between Ice Spice and Doja Cat. And what got those speculations heated up even more is when Doja Cat was answering some trolls on Twitter. And one of the trolls told her find a coochie to go munch on. And Doja Cat's response was find Ice Spice. So that was interesting to some people. Um, you know, it sent the girls into a tizzy even more, begging the question, is there a potential collaboration between Ice Spice and Doja Cat? Since Doja was so comfortable mentioning Ice Spice, they have, you know, taken a picture, had some type of rapport. And there's always rumors about who's collaborating with who. I guess time will tell if the collaboration comes about. Um, I'm not mad if it does. I'm not mad if it doesn't, because at the end of the day, um, you know, I, I like music from both of them, but I don't think it's necessary they collab right now. They're both doing their thing. Honestly, I don't know how that would even sound, if I'm being real, because Ice Spice, she got this smooth, laid back tone versus Doja Cat. But I mean, I guess if they found the right song with the right beat, it, it could do something. OK, if they caught the right vibe, I'm sure it could work. I wouldn't be mad at it at all. Like um, Ice Spice, I like Ice Spice's music and, and I like um, Doja Cat's music. So I wouldn't mind if they collaborated. Now, if they did collaborate, I know that song would have no choice but to do good on the charts, regardless if I like it or not, because Doja Cat is a uh, fire on them charts. And so is Ice Spice. They are both getting a push and they are both dominating the charts right now. Um, well, Doja was, Ice Spice currently is, but either way, they both get a lot of radio play. So I'm sure that record would do very well if it did come about, but who knows? Ice Spice, um, her producer or not her producer, excuse me, her manager, her manager, I think his name is James, when he was talking about Ice Spice, because he's the one who came out and said Ice Spice owns her publishing and her masters and all that. When he was talking about that, he mentioned something I thought was very interesting. I didn't mention it in my last video, but now that we up with this Doja Cat and Ice Spice possible collaboration, I want to bring it up. So James, her manager, Ice Spice's manager, um, he mentioned that after he, you know, after she owns her publishing and masters, he said Ice Spice is very selective about who she collaborates with. And that it has to make sense. And that Nicki Minaj and her collaborating made sense. And I want you to digest that for a minute. So think about why Cardi B, um, her Munch remix, why she was never put on the a Munch remix officially and why it wasn't officially released. Okay. Um, Cardi B never really officially got on that record. And I Spice never put it out like that, which is why Cardi B posted it to her Instagram. Um so that just leaves me wondering, did her team or, or Ice Spice not think it was a, a collaboration that made sense? Because like her manager said, the collaborations have to make sense to Ice Spice. And I don't think Ice Spice wants to collaborate with Cardi B, honestly, at least not at this moment in time. Um, because Ice Spice is low-key kind of replacing Cardi B. She's already surpassed her in monthly Spotify listeners. And... Um, on, in streams. And on top of that, that that's not a stamp that you want when you first come into the rap game, at least not the first stamp that you want anyway. 
like how Lorilla came in and got that Cardi B co-sign and it kind of fizzled out. So um, as a female rapper, if I'm coming into the rap game, the first stamp that I want as a female rapper is Nicki Minaj, not Lil' Kim, not Foxy Brown, not Remy Ma, not Queen Latifah. It's Nicki Minaj for many reasons. Um, and it made sense for Ice Spice to collaborate with Nicki on top of her already having admired her since, you know, she was a young girl. So um, it will also make sense if her and Doja Cat would collaborate because, you know, she really loves Doja Cat's artistry. I thought that was interesting that her manager, James, had said that because he did say that Ice Spice is very selective with her collaborations and that it has to make sense. And nobody tells her what to do because she owns her publishing. She owns her masters and it's really them working around her time. And I think that's dope. So I think Ice Spice definitely does want to collaborate with Doja. Will they come um, out with a collaboration? I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. And I would not be surprised if it did well, because like I said, they both do really good on the charts. They make radio friendly songs. So, you know, I would not be mad at Doja Cat and Ice Spice collaboration, even though I don't think it's absolutely necessary at this time, because I think Ice Spice low key needs to put out more solo music so people can get more of a feel for her. Because a lot of people like me are holding on to them six little songs plus no clarity, girl, and we need some more music, okay? Hopefully, you know, um, when she drops the deluxe of her EP, because uh, she is dropping that this summer, she'll add at least three or four more songs. And um, I think this is going to be an Ice Spice summer. Ice Spice, Coyle Ray, Nikki, and, and Doja Cat if she don't, you know, get too, too far left, which is a little bit too late. So let me know your thoughts. Now, speaking of uh, the trolling cat, Doja, um, she's back trolling, of course, and being a fucking nuisance. Um, but what's new? So what happened now? Well, Doja Cat, like I said, she's still on Twitter, still trolling. And because she's trolling, you know, people are going to troll her back. OK. And of course, she's going to respond because that's what she got to do. So what happened? Um, so a fan, it started with a fan. OK, because, you know, the fans always making her mad. Um, a fan has said, you know, everyone is mad at you because, you know, you're calling your fans dumb. And, you know, because she was she was she was going on this tirade and kept going back and forth with people and just basically calling her fans dumb to sum it up. So a fan was like, everyone is upset because you're calling your fans dumb. And she responded back and was like, dot, dot, dot. Are they not? And this is what caused the issue for a lot of people, especially a lot of people who call themselves fans and supporters of Doja Cat's music like myself, because now I have a problem. So. Y'all can let me know what y'all think and how y'all feel, but I'm about to give it to you exactly how I feel, and I'm not sugarcoating shit, okay? I feel like Doja Cat has become very entitled and very ungrateful. You were able to recover from your career after something as serious and detrimental as racist and colorist accusations, um, that being you in them tiny chat rooms. You were able to bounce back from all that and take the world by storm and the industry by storm and become one of the most top string female rappers right now. OK, right. You've been getting so much past your way or put your way. And um you know, I already came out here the other day and basically said Hot Pink and Planet Her were all cash grabs and basically told your pop fans um, straight up to their face that they were used and that it was all a money grab, which, I mean, it was money worth spent, well spent, because, I mean, you got the fans that you got and you got the success you got, so it wasn't for no reason, okay? So to me, you've been trying to convince your fans that they need to take their support elsewhere. That's all I can think of, because why in the fuck are you out here calling your fans dumb? Why are you out here trolling them every two seconds? Because I don't know what else Doja Cat is trying to do. I don't know if she thinks she's coming across as edgy and different and mysterious, but it's only coming across as ungrateful, entitled and annoying. That's what it's giving me. OK, very much antics, very much gimmick energy. These are the same, these dumb people you call them dumb, these are the same dumb people that pays your bills. These are the same dumb people that bought those albums, okay, that you said were cash grabs, um, that fund your lifestyle that you live today. These dumb people are the ones that are buying your tickets when it's time for your shows. These dumb people are the ones that's showing up for your shows, okay? These dumb people are the ones that's voting for your ass on the fan voted awards, okay? So I want to watch, um, I would watch your mouth if I were you, Doja. Watch who you call them dumb. However... I have to be fair because Doja Cat is not the first female rapper to call her fan base dumb. OK, Cardi B has called her fan base dumb, amongst other things, multiple times. I kid you not. And nobody has ever, ever held her accountable or posted it to a blog, um, you know, for it to make a headline. OK, Cardi B saying, you know, her fans are dumb is just as wrong 
as Doja Cat, okay? You gotta keep it, keep swallow a real pill. You gotta be fair across the board. Um, but Cardi B, she, she, she's, she, she said some things much worse to her fans. And she's probably the first female rapper I have ever seen in real life, in real time, to call her fans dumb, amongst other things, okay? So, you know, Doja Cat probably seen Cardi B get away with it and think she can too. And, you know, people love to pick and choose what and who they have an issue with. Uh, both of these young ladies saying their fans are dumb because they are literally the only reason why you're here today is just dumb in itself to me. OK, you guys are the one that's dumb to call the people dumb. That is literally funding your lifestyle. OK, the labels may pay you, but there would be nothing to pay, baby, if you didn't have fans. All right. So y'all have to put music out at the end of the day and somebody has to buy and support and stream that bullshit. And it's the very people that y'all are calling dumb. So I think it's very dumb to call people dumb who you literally have to depend on to support you. OK, don't bite the hand that feeds you, baby. I consider myself or at least did a fan of Doja Cat. OK, and one of the people who stream support and buy her records. OK, but if you want to refer to me as dumb, bitch, fuck you. OK, because I don't have to support shit from you or any of these other rap hoes. Um, and, and that's how I feel. I love Doja's music and I've always have since Amala. But this whole new personality that she has going on or this renaissance she's going through is a turnoff to me. And apparently not just me, but a lot of her fans, which is why you keep going back and forth with them in the first place. So, you know, I think Doja Cat is one of the few rap girls who was coming in and giving us pr a promise and hope as far as longevity goes and be the next big thing. And even though she is big, I don't know if that longevity is going to last because if she continues to keep this entitled and shitty ass personality and keep these antics and gimmicks going, I don't think baby girl is going to like the way that this is going to end because what's going to happen is people are going to get fed up and tired of your bullying and ungrateful ass attitude and take their support elsewhere. And that's honestly what I think is going to happen. We already see Ice Spice uh, surpassing Cardi B. She can easily surpass Doja Cat. I don't even know if Doja Cat really wants to stay in music at this point because this is just horrible publicity training, horrible PR. Like where is her team? Because this is horrible. I don't care how big of a push you're getting. I don't care how good the music is. I don't care about none of that shit because all of that can change with an instance okay um ask the baby because he was sitting high and now he's looking very low baby do you hear me so i mean i just think that she needs to be very careful because she's going to run into people like me who's gonna be like bitch fuck you and take that support and that money elsewhere so let me know your thoughts on it below now the next topic i'm going to get into is lotto and jermaine dupree so Jermaine Dupri was given an interview and Lotto got brought up and Jermaine spoke on the fact that a lot of people online seem to think he fumbled the ball with Lotto because of the type of music she's making and how her career has turned out. And this is what he had to say. People keep always saying, Jermaine, you dropped the ball on Mulatto or Lotto, right? And I, what, I, I don't, what I don't think people understand is I put Lotto's record out. The, the deal was if you win on the rap game, you get a single from Jermaine Dupri on So So Death. That single came out. The problem was is that Lotto was 16 years old and the outlets didn't support it. And then nobody was like speaking on it. Nobody talked about it. You know, if you watch the TV show, you saw it. But yeah. if not, nobody was like, so people didn't start talking about Lotto till she started making more vulgar records, dressing more sexual, being an adult. So it made me be like, bam, so is, these kids not accepted, right? That's all. People so let me know what you think about it. Um, at this point, it should be no secret that Latte's you know, she first got her recognition by being on the show, The Rap Game, when she was younger. That was back in 2016, 2015, something like that. And, you know, she was the winner of the show. And one of the prizes was you get a sign with Jermaine Dupri, which I don't know what the fuck and why the fuck anybody would want to do that. Because I don't know when the last time Jermaine Dupri been popping like that if he wasn't getting clout off of Janet Jackson. And that's my most humble opinion. I'm not saying he ain't added nothing to the, the culture, but child, who's been checking for Jermaine Dupri? So um, that's part of the reason I don't think the song did what it really uh, or what Jermaine wanted it to do. Um, I don't think it was just because she was 16. Because, I mean, there's been plenty of people who have literally reached fame at as a teenager in the music industry. I mean, look at Bad Baby. Uh, th that was around the same time that that shit was happening, right? Or somewhere after. So, I mean, she was getting all that attention as a child and been putting out music. And believe it or not, people buy the bullshit. So, I think it has um, more so to do with the type of content and the music 
that, you know, she had put out versus her being a minor or a child. Because let's swallow a real pill. The industry loves children, okay, with they weird, sick asses. They love children. They love to push kids. Look at Chris Brown, Usher, Justin Bieber, Rihanna, NBA, Kodak, Foxy Brown, Beyonce, Lil Wayne, and so many others who rose to fame on being teenagers. And many were also taken advantage of, too. So I don't think it had anything to do with her just being purely 16. Um, I think, for one, it had to do with the content she was putting out and two it had to do with your ass because nobody want to hear you rapping okay um so yeah of course she only switched it up when you know she became vulgar and you know when she became vulgar she started to get more mainstream she got that bbl she hooked up with 21 and, and got big headed and now she's using you know the Nicki minaj beef to fuel her career so i mean i don't think jermaine it was his fault about anything i think a lot of his career turned out how it did because a lot of made the choices that she has made so i think um that's more so the deal with what happened with Lotto, you know, because Lotto can be very explicit, especially in her music. Um, when she first put out her first album back in 2020, it was very explicit, like very. When I heard her on that song with Boosie, another nasty song, I was surprised when I found out she was like 21. Because I'm like, why would this 40-year-old man want to do a song with this 20-year-old girl spitting as nasty and shit like this? So um, I think it, it has more so to do with lotto wanting to be more sexual because sex sells and that's what her label probably wanted from her but now they want her to be for nikki to fill her career so you know let me know your thoughts on it below so the next topic i would like to get into is flo millie and ice spice because um after that billboard cover and the interview had came out the other day and we talked about it in my last video go check it out if you ain't watched it well, that whole spiel caused people to have a conversation around Ice Spice, okay? And this little billboard headline and interview that came out, and it had people in a tizzy, and it was mostly the title, okay? And I thought the, the, the title to the cover was hard as hell, talking about the Ice Age, baby. I can't even hold you. That's a hard-ass title. I don't give a damn what side of the fence you stand on. You can't lie, baby. That's a hard-ass title, calling it the Ice Age, baby. Do you hear me? What, girl, what? Anyways, um... A lot of people was not feeling it, you know, because they were calling her the people's princess and saying that she's a princess of rap. And, you know, um, I want to make something very clear. Ice Spice did not self-proclaim this princess of rap title or the people's princess. Um, she didn't even self-proclaim Princess Diana. Literally, people were calling her that. So she did not self-crown herself anything until people started calling her Princess Diana. And she just went with it and um, put out a song called Princess Diana. And she talked about that in her interview with Billboard. Um so there's that. And yeah, she went with it from there. OK, so we can make that point clear. She did not self-crown herself anything. That's literally the people's princess. The people have chosen. And it, it, that's just that. OK, um, so she did not call herself that. Um, but she did put out the song Princess Diana and it kind of went up from there. And, you know, because she said that's how people was treating her. She thought it was a funny comparison, but she just eventually went with it. So like I said, a lot of people did not like this. And it started a conversation that somehow got Flo Millie involved. And a lot of people were comparing Flo Millie to Ice Spice, trying to uplift Flo Millie to bring down Ice Spice, to say the least. And, um, you know, Flo Millie, it got back to her and she wasn't feeling it. So I'm going to read off a few of the tweets that started to go viral that people were talking about. Um, Ice Spice being called the princess, the people's princess. Um, starting with uh, the first tweet that kicked everything off and went viral. He said, I can give you um, a Flo Millie verse better than um, Ice Spice's entire disc uh, discography, unreleased and deleted. And then another user said, Flo Millie should be on the same level as Ice Spice, uh, fame wise, if we being real. And then another user said, I love Ice Spice, but the princess of rap, uh, Flo Millie is right there. And so it was just a lot of the same tweets comparing Flo Millie to Ice Spice, uplifting Flo Millie to downgrade Ice Spice. So let me know what you think about it. Um, so for one, I am always going to be an advocate for colorism. I am not going to deny the impact of colorism um, on not just the music industry, but in America and in the world, period. OK, colorism is a big beast that is not going to be tackled anytime soon, I feel like. And we can start there. So does Flo Millie, is she affected by colorism? Absolutely. I honestly think she is because she is super talented to me. I enjoy a lot of her music, not all of it, because like I said, you know, she's not for everybody. Um, a lot of people say her voice sounds a little bit too childish, a little bit too high pitched. A lot of people think she makes music for kids and blase, blase. But regardless, she be having bars and I think Flo Millie makes cute music or however. OK, um, 
what you want to spin it. I think she's talented. If you were to ask me if colorism is affecting her career, um, yeah, I, th I think it is. Okay. However, I think she is also still successful because Flo Millie doesn't have a problem selling out shows and, and, and packing out her, her concert. So, you know, um, but if you were to ask me to put it on one song right now, um, uh, between Flo Millie and Ice Spice, I'm not even going to hold you. I can't even lie. I got to swallow a real pill. I'm going to put it on an Ice Spice song. Okay. More than likely. I'm going to put it on acting a smoochie or Princess Diana because that's what I've been on heavy these days because, you know, that's what's in rotation right now. I done ran gangsta boot into the ground. Even though I love me some Flo Millie, Ice Spice, she's doing it for me right now, okay? I, I be with a bop with my girls and, and we be on that Ice Spice, okay? She make the bops for the girls. And that is no shade. I, I think Flo Millie is very talented and I really do think... Um, she should be a little bit farther along than where she is, but she is where she needs to be. Like I said, she has no problem selling out shows. She has fans. She gets streams. So she's she's successful, okay, in her in her own right, in her own regard. And um, hey, she's making more money than us at this point, right? So we also have to have the conversation about acknowledging colorism without downgrading and disrespecting another artist, okay, in the process. Colorism can exist without you disrespecting and taking away from Ice Spice. And I don't think people are really clicking in on that. Ice Spice may not deserve to be called a princess of rap, given. But you also have to acknowledge the fact that she's not going around calling herself the people's princess or the princess of rap. This is something people are literally putting on her. OK. Um, and that just says a lot about her. As much as I love Flo Millie, she's not getting the type of push that Ice Spice is getting. And she has yet to put out a song that has yet to really pop off. Despite her putting out a lot of popular TikTok song, it's not translating on things like Billboard. OK. Um, however, that's not to take away from Flo, Flo Millie whatsoever, because like I said, she has fans and she has no problem selling out concerts. OK, because them fans are something serious when you go to a Flo Millie show, baby. Do you hear me? All right. So um, I just don't think it's cool to sit up there and downgrade someone to uplift someone else. So this is what Flo Millie had to say about people comparing her to Ice Spice. I wish you all would stop with this tired ass narrative y'all love to push about my career and stop mentioning me while trying to degrade another artist. It's weird. I'm doing great. I went from being broke to traveling the world with my talent and I'm only 23. Please relax. And I wholeheartedly agree with Flo Millie. Um, but I will say this. It is natural to compare female rappers. This is this is a sport at the end of the day. It's competitive and we are going to compare. OK, however, it is a difference between comparing and just flat out being disrespectful and diminishing someone's talent in, in, talent in that comparison with someone else, especially when we know they are trying and pushing their pen. And um, we all should know if we don't know by now, Ice Spice does write her music. There's no one else getting those writing credits. OK, uh, which is something a lot of female reciters can say. So for Millie, though, she's also one of the ones and one of the few that pushes her pen also. But I wholeheartedly agree with her. And um, like she said, she's 23, very young. Ike Spice is also 23. So they have both accomplished great things in their own um, right. And they are each their own artist. Does colorism exist? And is that a possible reason why Flo Millie's career has not taken off the way Ice Spice has? Of course. Um, but that does not take away from Ice Spice's talent and her ability to write raps and make bops. So, you know, um, yeah. However, do we also have Ice Spice who pushes her pen and is talented um, and, but benefits off of colorism? Yes, we do. OK. And that's just something that we have to digest. And um, like I said, both are talented in their own right. And that's how I feel about that. But, you know, I listen to both girls. They're very young. And um, I think both girls have a bright future in rap. You don't always have to be on on the top 100 on Billboard to have a successful rap career. As long as you got like 200 or 500 dedicated rap fans, you can have a successful music career. But Flo Millie has way more than that. I'm just, I'm just, you know, speaking at this point. But um, I've seen Flo Millie shows and then people know how to come out and support her, colorism or no colorism. But I just don't think it was cool to shit on Ice Spice to uplift Flo Millie. Because um, like I said, she's not going around calling herself the people's princess. So let me know your thoughts on it below. So the next topic I'm going to get into is my little toxic chocolate Cali girl. OK, so Cali is one of the underrated rap girls. OK, that I think don't get half as much credit as she should. And I've said this before. I fucks with Cali heavy. I told y'all I was really fucking with that um, toxic chocolate EP. I was really heavy on that um, when it came out. And I still am. It's still in rotation. There's a song on there called Standards, which really turned me on to Cali. And it got my attention to her more so. Um, but I love that song, Standards by Her. And she 
also has a song called Mrs. Lickback on that same EP, and that is my shit. And also a song called Toxic Chocolate, and that hoe goes off. Do you hear me? It got this toxic, sinister, sexy sound about the beat, and I love that whisper rap that Callie be doing because I think it fits her so well, as well as Enchanting and Ice Spice. I think those are a couple of the other rap girls who I think does good with that little whisper rap. It just be a cool, laid bad vibe, and it, it, it suits them to me. But um, I really do like Callie. So I mean it when I say congratulations to her because she got her first billboard entry with her viral TikTok song, Area Codes. So congratulations to Callie. This is her first billboard entry. And as an artist, a music artist, the billboard is a big deal to get a song on there. Is, is monumental to an artist because not all artists see Billboard during their career. So I hope this is her first of many Billboard entries. Like I say, I fucks with Callie and I'm here for her to receive her credit and just do that I believe she deserves. So if you didn't check out her EP, Toxic Chocolate, I would highly recommend it. It's a nice little vibe. I actually have the whole thing downloaded and I'll be streaming and I ain't even gonna lie to you. Callie is certainly one of the rap girls that be in heavy rotation in my playlist. She has been grinding for some time, so it's good to see her get the attention and recognition she deserves, especially being a darker skinned rap girl, like literally dark skinned. I'm not talking about brown paper bag dark skin. I mean, literally chocolate. OK, what we mostly don't see. OK, uh, what we mostly do see in this rap game and in this space is the lighter skinned women in rap taking over the charts. So it's refreshing um, to have some representation. And I know y'all love to call Megan dark skinned. Um, but as a woman who was darker than Megan, I do not view Megan as dark skin. To me, she would pass, uh, barely pass the brown paper bag test. So when I say dark skin, I'm talking about chocolate, like chocolate. And I don't see Megan as that type of chocolate. She's like a, a mocha with a little bit of cream in it to me. So let me know your thoughts on it below.
So the next topic I want to get into is Sweetie and Young Baby Tate because they dropped the video the other day to their song, Hey Mickey, the remix. So if you got a chance to check that out, let me know what you thought about it down below. I am going to start off by saying I thought the video was real cute. I liked the concept of the video. It seemed really playful and fun. And I thought it was a cute vibe. I thought it was creative, which, you know, I really don't expect nothing less from Young Baby Tate because I do find her creative. I do find her talented, actually. Um... And she's one of the rap girlies I find to be talented and underrated because she does make good music. Okay, I don't listen to all of it because now I don't be liking all of it, but there she got some good songs. Now, what I will say um, about the song, Hey Mickey, um, I can never get over how Baby Tate was able to literally just hijack Nicki Minaj's whole little freak flow. Like the whole time Tate was rapping in this song, it was giving me Nicki Minaj's little freak verse energy, low key. Like with the aesthetics of the video too, no, not even gonna hold you. The way she was making her facial expressions and everything, I can definitely see the Queen of Rap's inspiration all up and through that, okay? And ain't nothing wrong with it. Just don't be playing dumb when the people point it out to you, baby. Do you hear me? Now, what I will say is this. Uh, this video was released um, a week ago and hasn't even cracked 500,000 views. Um, I want to say the last time it was at like 350,000 that I checked a few hours ago. That's an issue, especially when she had the likes of Sweetie to hop on this song to help it do a little song sign. Now, I will give credit to Young Baby Tate because this song, Hey Mickey, came out years ago, like in 2016. TikTok is what got the song back jumping. Um, so she dropped the remix and put Sweetie on it, which I just don't think was the right move. OK, for you to have a song gain popularity over five years after putting it out is a ball you just cannot fumble, a ball you just cannot miss. She was supposed to put somebody real hot on that remix, musically speaking, and I don't feel like Sweetie is that hot when we're talking about music, and it's no shade, and it's no tea. Um, just my most humble opinion, okay? I feel like if she could have, maybe she could have gotten Ice Spice on it, somebody who's currently hot right now, um, or, because I low-key can, can hear Ice Spice on that beat, low-key, um, or maybe she could, no, who she really should have got on and who I think would sound really nice is Rico Nasty. I think she would have killed it. But I don't think Sweetie did this song the most justice that could have been served. I think Sweetie rapped better than what she usually be doing, but it still didn't do it for me. It didn't hit for me. So I think Young Baby Tate would have had more success with this song and video had she put someone a little bit more talented and well-versed in a rap game on it, even if it wasn't a female, but a male. So, you know, um... I don't think Sweetie really added much to the song or helped it at all. Like I said, it wasn't a trash verse. It was one of her better verses, but it still didn't hit for me. However, like I say, the video was cute. Kudos for, to, you know, to Young Baby Tay to get this song back popping after five years, over five years. I think that's dope. So let me know your thoughts and feelings on it down below. Now, the next topic I want to get into is Rory and Ma, because child... <laughs> More and more of their conversations make their rounds on my Twitter feed, and I be wanting to add my little two cents in so bad. So the topic was Summer Jam. And the fact that the tickets have not yet been sold out despite them, you know, going on sale months ago. And despite the fact that, excuse me, I got an email. And despite the fact that, you know, they downsized from the MetLife Stadium, which seats like 80,000 people, to now having it at the UBS Arena, which can't even fit like 20,000 people, bitch. Okay. So that's over a 50,000 difference in capacity. And we talked about this a couple of months ago when this information was first revealed. And I told y'all I believed it was due to people really just not being interested in these new artists. Um, you know, whereas the A-list artists like Nicki Minaj, Beyonce, Rihanna, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, even Summer Walker and SZA, like, it, it's not going to draw the same crowd. Okay? Anyway... The conversation was surrounding the possible reasons why after 20 years of being held at the stadium is it now being held at an arena, which holds far less people than a stadium, despite having a headliner as big as Cardi B and other acts. So this is basically a festival size audience is what they're saying. So um, this is how the conversation went. Take a listen. Uh, the, the, the main thing that stuck out is the fact that it is now moving from MetLife Stadium in New Jersey, which was a capacity of 82,000 people to the UBS arena in Long Island, which is 19,000 people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what does that say about the Summer Jam event? 60,000 less seats. The lineup, uh, uh, the drawing power maybe. I think it just speaks to whatever the budget that Emmis probably gave them. Yeah. Which I, I mean, I know for a, a long time, Summer Jam was a big moneymaker for them and they, they would put the bread up and get it back. But yeah, I think it's just they didn't get the budget they deserved for Summer Jam. It's just not... What it was, but at why? One time. 
probably because their income in general, like when they go to accounting meetings, that they just don't have the money to put up to do, say, a MetLife. Because you, if you go over one minute in MetLife, it's fucking a quarter million dollars. Mm-hmm. Jesus. So it's probably just a nightmare, even though festivals are getting bigger and performances are becoming more important for artists. I just don't think Hot 97 not being, they're not on iHeart, where iHeart can take a budget from another thing and just give it. Right. Yeah. Emmis, I think Emmis still owns them. You let me know. They do. Flex with they the do. checks that he gives you. Are they from Mr. Flex or are they from Emmis? They're from Mr. Flex, but yes, I'm sure Emmis owns them still. Thank you. F, F Flex? Yeah. On your W. F Flex? F Flex is nasty. F Flex oh. LLC. <laughs> yeah, I just don't think they have the capital to be able to put together a MetLife show. And the money that artists are getting from festivals right now, you know they're getting yeah. way over what they typically do when Verizon is hosting a certain festival. Um, Hot 97 probably just doesn't have the money to one, fund MetLife, two, be able to afford the artists that they want. I, th- I think that's, I'm leaning more towards that. I think the fact that the Summer Jam Festival over the years has not been able to either book the bigger acts. Mm. Um, and, and, I, and I think it speaks to a lot. I think it speaks to the fact that just hip hop in general is now, uh, you know, the artists that are, you know, I guess click worthy names. They're just not stadium draws. Yeah. They don't draw 80,000 people. Like, you know, they like it's like the festival stage. This is now like, quote unquote, a uh, festival stage now. This went from a stadium stage mm. to the festival stage that used to be outside of the stadium at MetLife. This is what this feels like now. It's like, OK, we have to condense this. We have to downsize this a little bit only because, again, a lot of these artists, while they do have uh, records that are, you know, trending on social media and TikTok and things like that, it's not going to draw a stadium sized crowd to come out, pay to see these artists only perform one or two records, one or two that, records that they have. Too. Right. And it just kind of sucks because, you know, Summer Jam is such a staple to us that this has turned into like, you know, one of those nights at the Barclays yeah. where they'll put together like a quick lineup. Mm-hmm. Promote it two weeks before, mm-hmm. sell twenty thousand tickets, and you know, okay, it's well, not you don't stop what you're doing that year, right? <laughs> the way you may have for Summer Jam before. All Sorry. right, well, the lineup: Cardi B is headlining. Shout out to Cardi, uh, Ice Spice, Coyle Ray, Glorilla, Lola Brooke, French Montana, Fabio, Little TJ, and the celebration of fifty years of hip hop with the Locks. And we do assume that they, the Locks will bring out mm. uh, other acts to join them on stage. Mm-hmm. So um, the lineup is not, it's not, it's a New York lineup, New York heavy, even though obviously Coy Larray isn't from New York, it's Jersey, same thing, it's our cousin. But um, so High 97 did the right thing in representing New York, the New York artists, supporting New York artists, giving them a stage, giving them the, the festival. Uh, but again, a lot of these artists, to put them in front of 82,000 people and expect them to sell that out, I don't think that that is, it makes sense financially. Uh. So let me know your thoughts on it uh, down below. What you think and how you feeling. Um, I really don't know what we're talking about. I mean, I do, but I really agree with Mal. Okay. The people they have performing do not draw 80,000 people. Okay. Trending or hot records aside, it'd be cute for the moment, but that's not going to take enough to draw out 80,000 people to see you perform that one little cute TikTok song. Okay. That they can watch from the living room couch. It's not a Beyonce show. I mean, Koi, Lola Brooke, French Montana, Glorilla, Lil Tajay, Fabio Florin, The Locks, Cardi B, and Ice Spice. That's the lineup. I agree with Mal when he says, for one, this would not make financial sense to have half of what you can categorize as new fucking artists to perform at a stadium. It's not going to happen. OK, 80,000 people ain't going to come out to hear one or two TikTok bops from one artist. OK, and, or seven TikTok bops from seven different artists. OK, Koi, Lola, Brooke, um, I Spice, Glorilla and Lil Tajay have all recently popped off within the past one to two years. They are new artists. So to have new artists who are still growing their fan base to perform at a stadium is not going to happen. OK, it don't make sense money wise. It don't make dollars. Don't make sense. The only ones on this lineup who have been out at least five years is French Montana and Cardi B. I don't know who the fuck the locks are. Um, French Montana, and Cardi B, but no shade. OK, it's no shade. Who in the fuck want to see French Montana up there performing anything? OK, so out of all these people, you would think Cardi B would be, be the one to, you know, really draw out the crowd as the headliner. But even then, you, you can't sell out an arena because they have yet to sell out. This leads me to believe that this is the only reason why this girl ain't went on no world tour. But she's such a superstar. Right. 
I mean, if my memory serves me correctly, she couldn't even sell out Rolling Loud Thailand in the appropriate amount of time. It took months, okay? Or even an arena when tickets have been on sale for months. So, I mean, what is Cardi going to perform anyway? Her same old ass song she's been performing at Rolling Loud Thailand? Okay, all these performances, but no new music is just crazy to me. Okay, people paying money to see her perform WAP, Bodak Yellow, and Up, baby. <laughs> I think the reason Cardi hasn't been on tour is because of how them ticket sales would look. Okay, I ain't even gonna hold you. You can manipulate the numbers on the charts on YouTube, but not them ticket sales because people are gonna have to literally show up and buy. And I think that's why we have yet to see Cardi B go on a tour in, in six years because if she was really a superstar worldwide, like her fans claim, she would have had no issue selling out no show that she is headlining, especially a, a goddamn arena, bitch. Okay, she would have been on tour by now. As big as Invasion of Privacy was, why didn't she ever go on tour? That deserved a tour. Questions that need answers. She claims she's going to be um, going on tour for this next era, but baby, child, at this point, I believe it when I see it. All those accolades don't mean shit to me until I, I have seen people pay for a, a literal tour for you and, and bought your you know tickets to your show where it's sold out because they're coming specifically to see you. Then we can revisit the superstar conversation, but I don't think Cardi B can sell at a stadium at this point, in my most humble opinion, because if she is headlining, I see no reason, um, as big as y'all claim her to be, why they would have downsized if her fans actually showed up and showed out. On top of that, it's New York. Ain't she from New York? So, you know, it's interesting that even this arena has yet to sell out and the tickets went on sale months ago. So let me know your thoughts about it below and how, and the tickets went on sale months ago. So let me know your thoughts about it below and how you feeling. So remember, this is just my commentary and opinion. You can let me know yours below. Uh, but remember to keep it cute in them comments, baby. Do you hear me? Okay. But uh, don't forget, y'all, follow me on my Twitters at Southern T. That is Southern T with two A's at the end. And um, child, I will, you know, catch y'all in my next video.